Hi, and welcome to the Marriage After God podcast. We're your hosts, Aaron and Jennifer Smith. We have been married 15 years and have five sweet children who are growing up way too fast. We love God and we love marriage. And we love to be honest about it all. Marriage is not always a walk in the park, but we do believe it has a powerful purpose. So our goal here is to open up the conversation to talk about our faith and our marriage. Especially in light of the gospel. We certainly don't have all the answers, but if you stick around, we may just make you laugh. But our hope is to encourage you to chase boldly after God's purpose for your life together. This is Marriage After God. Welcome back to another episode of the Marriage After God podcast. I promise I don't have the giggles this time. So (laughs) if any of you were with us last week, I couldn't keep myself together. But here I am feeling mostly composed. (laughs) (laughs) It's good because in today's episode, we're going to be talking about breezing over a little bit. Hitting a nerve, maybe? Uh, Maybe striking a match and igniting a fire on a conversation with money, investing in marriage. So so it's something serious. That's what you're saying. Mm, A little more. It feels (laughs) serious these days. (laughs) All right. Well, today's episode is sponsored by our book, Marriage After God. Uh, This is a great resource for anyone or any couple that is looking for something meaty that will inspire and challenge a bit. Uh, It's a book that we wrote together. It dips into our story, but it also gets the reader to search out, what is God doing in my marriage? This book spends quite a bit of time talking about finances and marriage, so if you want to dive deeper into today's topic, we strongly encourage you to pick up a copy of our book, Marriage After God, and you can get that at Amazon.com or shop.marriageaftergod.com. So in light of this topic of uh, money, what was the inspiration? Why did you want to talk about this today? Well, number one, I mean, money's like top of the list for when you're thinking about marriage, relational things, things that that stressors. cause strife in yeah. marriage. Yeah. Mar- money's one of them. Yeah. yeah. Money's definitely one of them. Now, now you take that and put it in context to today's, uh, current situation. The, the issues <laughs> like, of, what are we of money experiencing? And mm-hmm. I think it makes it very relevant. Do you think that we have like some sort of special, like, uh, training in this or nope. like, I, it's not really our genre necessarily. We have talked about money a lot in the past because God's used it in our life, but um, I don't know. It, it seemed like a good idea to bring up because it's kind of on everyone's minds. Yeah. It's right in front of us, kind of at every turn. Uh, stuff I'll, that's I'll going say on this: in the world. if you're hoping to get some financial advice from today's episode, that's not what you're going to find here. You'll find encouragement. You'll find maybe, hopefully, some inspiration some spiritual inspiration to get you and your spouse talking about finances and marriage. But if you want something more, go check out Dave Ramsey or other resources, Mm -hmm. other podcasts that really, really get into the nitty gritty of finances. Cause this is more of just like, how does it relate to your marriage? (laughs) Uh, On some level, which is important quote unquote financial advice as in encouraging them in the way to be thinking about it and, um, right. And the usefulness of We're it. We're just not giving direct, like, you should go do this. Yeah. And I actually want to, I want to boldly and uh, with asterisks dis- disclaim that we're not financial advisors. And so please don't walk away from in, in, from this episode and go do something and say, Aaron and Jen told me to do this. We're going to share with you things that we think about and things that we've walked through and things that we care about. And maybe you can learn something, but um, we're definitely not financial advisors. <laughs> Okay, not to take a total tangent here, but you said the word asterisk. 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 Okay, I had to look it up because my whole life I said asterisk, like asterisk. I don't know. When I see that little star, that's how I hear it, asterisk. Uh, but lately, when I'm working with Elliot, like on spelling and language arts, I'm constantly looking up words and I'm realizing I'm saying things wrong. And so one of my words this week, Elliot turns to me, he goes, Mom, why have you been saying interrogative it's interrogative <laughs> it's like hold on let me google it <laughs> interrogative yeah, interrogative said that wrong all last year <laughs> <laughs> oops. oops i'm sure there's a lot of words we've said wrong and continue <laughs> to say wrong but that's really funny okay back to money okay okay we're talking about Sorry. money so we've been married for 15 years um and i i feel like we've gone through quite a few different seasons of life um, specifically when it comes to money, yeah. like just how our relationship to it, uh, how much we've had, how little we've had depending on our jobs or what we, we were doing. Yeah. We've gone through and we're, it's only been 15 years and I feel like we're now in a new season financially mm-hmm. and it's just going to keep doing this roller coaster for the rest of our lives. Um, I can't think cause there's so many variables. There's so many things that affect finances and then 
there's us who affect our finances. Decisions we, we make. How we yeah. decide to spend it and save it and all of that. Our relationship to it, which is kind of like what we kind of want to talk about today is a little bit of that relationship relationship aspect with money. Yeah. Um, and also talk about some stuff that we've been learning and doing and experiencing ourselves. Um, so we've been in seasons of debt. We've been in seasons of making very little um, to no money at all. Um, I just, I, I even immediately thinking about stories in our life of just sitting in my car and we have no money in our Crisis. account. Crisis. <laughs> yeah. um, to seasons of abundance uh, where God's just allowed us to have access to more than we ever thought we could have. Yeah. Um, and, and back and forth. And everything between, but um, I feel like along the way, when I when I read this scripture in Philippians, when Paul talks about how God has taught him contentment, contentment in all circumstances, you know that verse that we all like to use that says, "I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me." Mm-hmm. The context of it is around uh, how to be content when you have nothing, mm-hmm. or how to be content when you have a lot. Mm-hmm. And so his his hit the point of that scripture is that. Um, he gives us the strength to handle every circumstance we come into in our life, whether poor or rich, uh, whether having a little or a lot. And that's what God's been teaching us is this idea of contentment in kind of every season. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're hard in their own aspect in different ways, depending on what side you're on. Well, in this um, idea for this episode that we had in talking about finances in relation to marriage, uh, I thought it would be cool if we just talked about a little bit of our foundation of how we think and view of money, how we've kind of built our foundation in marriage. Um, do you want to share a little bit about like, yeah, kind of, kind how like we, our, where we've landed? Where, maybe how we learned certain things. Yeah. Because we're, again, we're not experts, but we've been learning a lot of our, our life, but we also have a disposition necessarily to money, how we think yeah, about yeah. it because yeah. of the way we were raised. I think our parents yeah, for sure. did teach us on some level about money. Um, either they taught us directly yeah. about money by things they told us and showed us. But mm-hmm. I think we learned a lot of our thoughts of money, probably what we saw in our parents. Mm-hmm. And our own experience as we got older. Okay, money coming in, money going out. Uh-oh, more money's going out. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so just or, basic, or dealing with credit. Or basic experience like that, yeah. of money. But a lot of like the dialogue we've had about money in our marriage has been based on the Bible and what, like going to the Bible and saying, well, what wisdom is there in the word that we can draw mm-hmm. from? Um, I was thinking about this the other day when we were getting ready to do this um, episode and just how thinking about our homeschool with the kids and what we want them to learn. Cause we're always thinking ahead. And it's like, we really want them to understand money. And I wish we were taught this more in school. I wish there was a, a whole, Maybe there was, and I just well, missed it. <laughs> I, th- we did have a, I had an economics class for my, just my senior year is the only thing. Like but the one only, year when you're on your way out. It was out, one year, but like, I also don't remember, I can't remember there being anything about investing, anything about um, spending. It I mean, was just, taxes, just think about taxes. There just should that be, alone. There, there should be a serious phew. talk about that. But we were thinking about for our homeschool, like how can we incorporate these really important principles to teach our kids and give them a really strong foundation for then propelling them into adulthood um, for finances. Well, and it would be, it, it would be valuable because I feel like we're learning stuff now that if we would have known it 20 years ago, we would have made probably significantly different decisions. <laughs> um, but it, here we are. <laughs> yeah. We're here where we're at. We're learning. And, uh, I think everyone listening is in the same place. They, they've, they look back over, over their lives and the decisions they've made financially, they can mm-hmm. always pinpoint those like I shouldn't have spent that money or yeah. wish we would have saved here or I'm glad we saved or yeah. did this made this decision. So we're well, in the same boat. <laughs> yeah. Well, going back to, you know, the Bible's wisdom over money, uh, we wanted to share a couple of those anchor verses that we kind of lean on to when we're making financial decisions. But I wanted to share with you guys a cool resource that we use when we're looking up stuff for, in the Bible. It's called openbible.info. And it literally says, what does the Bible say about, and then it has a search bar for you to just fill in. <laughs> and it gives it gives you all the uh, verses in that topic. And you can even search by Bible, um, translation. Version. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty cool. Just yeah. And these, these scriptures, um, like we said, a lot of the way we think about money, we, we try and we try and go back to the Bible and say, okay, what does God say about money? Um, and having, having God's perspective on it, cause it does help us. It doesn't mean we've made all the right decisions, but mm-hmm. whenever we, even when we make wrong decisions, we, we can easily look back and be like, well, that's probably because we were unwise in this way, or that's probably because we didn't follow this principle. 
Um, so one of them is uh, 1 Timothy 6.10. It says, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. It is through the craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. So when I was reading through the scripture for this episode, the first thing I wanted to point out is I feel like this is probably one of the most uh, misquoted scriptures. Often people say money is evil specifically or money is the root of evil. But that's not what this is saying. Because money is just like a, it's a piece of paper. It's like nothing, right? Yeah, money is an inanimate object. It cannot be sinful or good Mm -hmm. or bad. It's just not the money that's doing it. It's what is inside of us. Uh, It says for the love of money Mm -hmm. is a root of all kinds of evil. So this isn't even the main root. This is just one of the roots that could be a root of all kinds of evil is when we have love for money. So well, root supports like a stem of a plant that grows mm -hmm. bigger. And so if you think about it, it's like when you have the love of money and your thirst for it and your bad things are going to grow out of that. Oh, many. Not mm-hmm. just one serious thing, but like you're going to have. A- yeah. Well, and the Bible talks a lot about fruit, mm-hmm. good or bad fruit. Mm-hmm. So talking about vine, if we have, if we love money, if we have a love for money, because it does, it becomes that root. And then the fruit that's going to come out of that is going to be bad fruit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just wanted to point that out as this is saying the love of money. This is something that's happening with inside of, inside of our hearts, mm-hmm. our disposition toward money. Do we see money as our God? Do we see money as our, our savior. Do we see money as our protection? Yeah. Security, Mm -hmm. all of those things. And then I love that it says, um, it is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. The things that one of the things that Jennifer and I've learned is anytime we've overstretched ourselves to try and do something to get more money, which we we get, we try and start businesses. We try and we end up having more pangs. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We're like, man, I wish we just would have been fine where we were at. And that's something that we've had to feel that pain several times in our lives for different little things. Um, but that's a, that's a true thing. When we have a love of this, we have, a, if we have a love for money, we're going to, it's going to have us wander away from the most important thing in our life, which is our faith, which is our trust and reliance on Christ to who knows what. I mean, you at fill minimum, it distracts us for sure. <laughs> at minimum. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, another one is Matthew six twenty four. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in money. Yeah. Every time I've Jeez. read this in my past, especially growing up, I always just thought it's so interesting that it's talking about t- two masters, and then at the very end it says you cannot serve God and money. Like he was talking about money the whole time. What? Yeah, the two masters. One is God and one's money. <laughs> Interesting. Um, and actually, the word money there, it's a, it's a Greek word, mammon, which is like a god. Mm-hmm. It was like a god of, of wealth, a god of riches. And so he, Matthew's pointing out, you know, from the words of Jesus, like we can't serve God and serve, like going back to First Timothy, that love of money, that pursuit of I'm, I just need more, I need more, I need more. We're, we're at that point, we're not serving God anymore. Well, if you think about all the things that start to change when you go in a certain direction or when you serve a master, um, you can, your, your intentions change, your motivations change, your mm-hmm. goals change. Well, and, I, and I've, I've felt seasons of this where I can feel myself like all I can focus on is, is making sure we have enough money. Mm-hmm. And, it, and I have to like, I'm constantly brought to my knees and saying, God, I, I'm, this is so much on my mind. This is mm-hmm. such a draw for me. It's so much, it takes so much energy to do this. I mean, there's also that, that thought like, I wish I didn't have to worry about that. And we yeah. just do this over here, but we also need money. So it's a part of life. I know this isn't like a part of our notes, but as you're just mentioning that, how do you, how do you also carry that weight of responsibility for your family? Because you're saying in one hand, like you don't want to be consumed and, and chase after that need to have to like provide, but then there's this responsibility aspect where it's necessary. And so what's the mm. balance? I'm going to be honest. It, I, it stresses me out sometimes. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, sure you're not the only I'm one. I'm sure there's a lot of husbands listening that feel the same way that there's this constant, like, well, I can't just go be a missionary. I got to pay my bills. Mm-hmm. I got to take care of my family. And that's, you know what, that's a, that is a ministry. We talk about this in our book, this idea of, Money as a tool rather than, you know, our pursuit, Mm -hmm. like whether like the thing that we're trying to Mm -hmm. obtain, um, because yeah, that's, that's a really good question. And it is, it's a, 
there's it tension. There. Absolutely requires me to seek God and ask for help a lot because I, I, I feel like I go in this ebb and flow where I feel like I'm pushing too hard finance to, to, to make sure finances are right or growing or being invested well. Um, and then I could feel like I not, but don't push hard enough. And I'm mm-hmm. like, man, I should have been working harder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's a, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. And I think it's one that all the men listening are shaking their heads here right now. <laughs> like sure, I, I am. <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate that. Um, okay. So the next one is Romans 13, eight. Oh, no one, anything except to love each other for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. I love this one because it, it we share this it, one a lot. <laughs> we have shared this one a lot, especially on this idea of getting out of debt. Um, because I do believe that believers should have a mentality and a posture towards money that we don't love debt, that we don't keep debt, that our, our lifestyle isn't like, Hey, I'm just going to going to spend and consume, but that we are, cons- we can serve and we are content and we use less. Um, and so I, I, we, we use this verse in that sense of, oh, no one, anything like our, our main, the only thing we should owe people is our love to each other in the church mm-hmm. and in the world. Um, but there's debt sometimes. And if we have, and we're going to talk about it a little bit, if we have a mentality, a debt free mentality, even though we may have debt, it does change a lot of things the way we operate in this world. And um, so I do believe our goal should be to be debt free on as much as we can. And to definitely avoid consumer debt, uh, but I think the main focus of this verse is that we have we have an we owe love to each other, mm-hmm. and so that is a the main focus of this verse is what we owe to each other is our love for each other. Cool. Just um, digging in a little bit more to this idea of living a debt free lifestyle, and just personally, Aaron, you, I feel like when we got into our marriage, you came with this. Um, foundation of no debt, like debt's not good. And you had this understanding of it. Was there something that inspired that in you other than the word or? Well, I believe um, if you remember, like we, we, we talked about this. um, I had a lot of debt. You had some debt before we got married, but you, you paid it off before we even got married. Yeah. It was like a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. But uh, when we're young, it, that feels like a lot. Yeah, it was. And I, and I had, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in school loans. school loans, which felt like a lot. And I, what, what happened was we were do, trying to be missionaries and we were living on almost no income, you know, volunteering for this organization. And when we were doing that, your loans were deferred. So we didn't have the responsibility to pay them yet until mm-hmm. one day it was like, Oh, I'm going to have to pay these. Wow. Now. This is reality. Yeah. Yeah. So from going from being able to live off of almost nothing to all of a sudden I have to pay this pretty large bill to us back then. It was huge. It was a couple hundred bucks a month, Mm -hmm. which would have been a big deal from us living off very little to nothing. And we realized like, man, we should probably go home and just get rid of this debt. Let's just go get jobs. Let's go work and let's work hard and let's do everything we we can. Really hard to get out of that debt. And it's not an easy thing. Like when we, when we encourage mm -hmm. you guys and you hear us say, live it, debt-free lifestyle, we know it's hard. We know it's easier said than done. We know, we know what it takes. And I it just wanted painful. you to hear that. It's, <laughs> it's a painful experience. So I would sure. say that's where we came from. There was this, this, I believe a godly motivation to get free from the debt so that we can be free to do more of what God has for us. I believe that's what we were feeling. Mm-hmm. And so we, we did that. And because of that, I, I don't know if everyone knows this, but this ministry that we have now all was invented in that same season Mm -hmm. of getting out of debt. Almost like right at the end of paying off of our our debt, this ministry was born. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we didn't have that plan. We had no idea that we were, this ministry was going to be a thing when we started getting out of debt. We just knew that God wanted to use us. And we knew that the debt was something that could hold us back. Mm. And so we're like, okay, let's just get rid of this while we can. It was really hard. I remember us having lots of, arguments, uh, conversations, tears around like Lots not being able to do what other couples our age yeah. were doing, not being able to have pots and pans, not mm-hmm. being able to have, like, there were, I remember these conversations, but mm-hmm. in reality, it was a very short season. It was a couple of years, I think. Mm-hmm. 
And it's way gone now. Oh, it's, it's, it's way in the past. And man, we look back on that and we're like, we're so thankful that we yeah. took that initiative. Um, and it may not be able to be everyone's story, but some of the things that we've learned along the way and that we share with people is this, uh, is this way of thinking about debt, not getting into more of it, uh, not spending more than you have. Like all those things are very important. Dave Ramsey talks about it. And, um, the Bible talks about how we should be with our money. So I think I, I would say it wasn't our idea. Um, but it was a cool journey that we got to go through in the early part of our marriage yeah. together. Cool. Well, I'm going to turn the dial on this conversation slightly. I guess it still kind of has to do with debt, but more so. It's more so our country's debt. Our country's <laughs> debt. We're going to talk a <laughs> yeah. little bit about inflation because it is affecting everyone right now. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if I could just come right out and say, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm, it's hard. It's hard to go through marriage when the world kind of seems unstable and yeah. uh, challenging. You, uh, Jennifer asked me, you, you asked me at the beginning of this episode before we started, you said, what do you want to get out of this episode? Yeah. Like, cause we, we always ask ourselves, what do we want for you, the listener? And I was like, I just want them to, fit, to know it's okay that we're all in the same boat and that these things are going to happen in the world and that our money, that money and our finances and our wealth are not our security. They're just not. And so that we're talking about these things to just remind us that our security is in Christ alone, that this is not our home, and that we can trust him and rely on him. And we can know that let's just let's just try and do the next right thing. Mm -hmm. Let's try and walk in his wisdom. Let's make changes. So that's that's kind of what I want to get out of this episode. And that's one of the reasons we're talking about inflation is because it's a real thing and it does affect everyone Mm -hmm. pretty much equally across the board. Um, so just a quick overview of what's happening in the world right now, and it's, at least in the United States, but it's kind of happening in the whole world. But I'm just going to talk about some of the stats that we have here in the U.S. Um, the uh, inflation essentially is the depreciation of the dollar. So we have a one dollar bill and we think it's worth a dollar, but in reality, it's not worth a dollar because what that dollar could buy 20 years ago and what that dollar can buy today, not the same things. Um so here's some quick stats for you uh, based off of the inflation percentages over the last several years. From 2012 to 2020, uh, the average is probably about 2.3, 2.1. You know, we have a 1.7% increase, 1.5, a 2.1. But in 2021, you can I have a graph on this page. Babe, do you see that? Yeah, I see it. Tw- so from 2020, it's 1.4%, uh, 1.4% uh, inflation. 2021, 7% crazy 2022 8.3%. Those are huge numbers. And these are average numbers. These aren't like to take into account, you Each know, the cost of milk yeah. or the cost of gas or mm-hmm. the co- and you can all we all we're all thinking about the thing that costs more to us now and we're like, yeah. "Oh my goodness." Um according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, $100 in 2016, okay, could buy you what now costs $123. Mm. That's a 23% increase on average, of, on goods and services. Hmm. That's huge. And in, in what, five years, six years, barely? That's a, that's a big jump and that affects us. Like we don't think about this, but that actually affects us. Because it's accounted for over everything. It's not just one thing, right? It's oh, also, yeah. I mean, think about gas. Oh, <sighs> Since just gas the prices. last year or two, it's been... Well, for us, like we, we don't have the best economic vehicle, vehicle for gas. Mm-hmm. We never had to usually think about it because gas prices <laughs> for a long time were pretty decent. Um, the average price in 2020 was $225. Um, but even at one point, it was $1.90. Like that was so low mm. back in the day. And that was only in 2020. Back in the day. <laughs> yeah. I, I was looking this up and it says today's average gas price across the nation is $370. I just don't believe that. We're paying $480 here mm-hmm. in Bend. And I just... Other places are higher, but 370 is the national average. Okay. But that's still more than a, a dollar and a half. That's a dollar and a half more in two years. It's a lot of fuel. Or a lot that's of a lot of money, money for fuel. Um, so is this because of the last two years and COVID and everything? Those things are part of it. I'm not going to, again, I'm not an econ- economist, I should okay. say. But things like COVID, uh, it did have an effect on this because of how we printed money. Um, if you don't understand this, how this works, that the, the government can print money. And so we print our dollars, we print our tens, our twenties, our hundreds. They, they can also create money in other ways. 
Um, and a lot of the inflation that we have now is because uh, this is kind of crazy with this. And this is according to NASDAQ.com. Over 80% of all available money that's been printed or created has happened in the last two years. That's no, not a joke. I, I don't even understand what you're saying right now. I, it's crazy. I'm looking at another graph and we can see from 1950 all the way to 2020. And there's this steady incline. And in 2010, there was a pretty s- steep incline. But then from 2020 to 2022, it just looks like a, a knife going straight up out of the ground. And the amount of money that we've created. So we think about the COVID relief bill and they, yeah. they, and they printed just trillions of dollars to give out to people. And that was great for people that needed it. But now that money's gone and everything costs more. Mm. So because we got that little bit of relief, then it's actually hurting us now mm. in a big way. And it's actually going to hurt our kids and our grandkids. So this, inf- a lot of this inflation is caused by um, the simplest way to put it too much money chasing too little resources. Mm. So it, that's, that's just what happens when there's a lot of money and there's very little stuff to buy. All those things that we buy on a normal basis become way more expensive. I know I'm being very basic and there's probably people that are way smarter than me thinking, Oh, he doesn't even know the half of it, but mm. all I know is inflation's here and I don't know how long it's going to last. Um, and it affects us all. I'm sure we surprised our listeners today because we don't usually draw in statistics or <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But we, we actually, we think about a lot of these things, but we have, a, we don't, there's a lot of things that we discuss with our friends and in our personal life that we don't always bring up, but we care about and we think about and we consider and it, um, yeah, I, I'll just, I want to bring up another little story. Yeah. Um, we built this house, mm-hmm. but we actually planned on building this house in 2020 mm-hmm. and we were rom- really close to closing on a piece of property to build this house. And we backed out of it because of everything happening in the markets. And we thought, you know, we have no idea what's going on. We don't know what's going to happen with all the prices of goods. We were about to have our baby. We were about to have a baby. And we like, we just, we just canceled it. And we're like, well, wait now in hindsight, it would have been better to do it then than it was to do it now because all the things that we feared happening then Mm -hmm. were affecting us. All the resources, all all the, all Ooh. the material, the cost of materials skyrocketed for yeah. us, which they wouldn't have back then. Yeah, that was hard. But again, we're, it's all hindsight. We don't, we don't know. We don't have, can't see the future. Yeah. So we, th- we just tried to do the wisest thing we could do in that moment. And that's what we did. And I, I don't regret it. But at the same time, I look back and I say, oh, well, the things we were worried about, we, mm-hmm. we were a little early on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So with all of this information you just shared about inflation, what can the couples listening do to talk about it? How how does one talk about finances in light of world stage stuff? Like, what, are, what do what we, we do? Yeah, what have we done? I was going to ask <laughs> what you. What do we do? What do we do? <laughs> um, we talk about it. Even yeah. when we don't really understand everything, every aspect, we try to. We try and dig in and and, you know, look at the news and talk to friends, like you said. Um, there's been a lot of prayer prayer. because I don't know how many times I just pray, God, I don't, I have no idea what to do. Please help me. I don't, we, we can't fix this. Um, something that's really encouraged me is we reassure one another, uh, to trust in the Lord. mm -hmm. And that's always, that's always helpful for me because I tend to be more of a fearful or, you know, I get anxious thoughts and stuff. And so reminding each other to rely on the Lord is really important. Yeah, and it's something that is good to remind us. I think we talked about in episode one of this season about how sometimes we can look in hindsight and just see so clearly all the decisions we made and think, why did we make those decisions? Why didn't we make this decision? Right. And we kind of like judge ourselves on like, oh, we failed or we did all this bad stuff or we didn't make any good decisions. Um, Reminding each other that we did try with the knowledge we had in the situations we were in right. to make wise decisions. Yeah. We did try. Yeah. And also, Hey, sometimes there was decisions that we made and we let's learn from it rather than just keep kicking ourselves down. Right. Yeah, that's good. Um, and then there's things that we can do. So in the talking about it, like, Hey, what is happening in our finances? There's also the talking about what can change or what can be done to help relieve yeah. some of that, those pain points. From like it. drive way more. No, because get, oh wait, I mean, no, um, drive, way, drive less. way less because gas prices. This is a serious conversation, and I know it's hard. But like, what sacrifices can be made? What what things can be done 
um, that you weren't doing that could help mm -hmm. the situation yeah. of finances. Um, you know, maybe it's it's uh, taking a break from some extracurricular thing or putting to, things yeah. on pause for a little bit that maybe you'd like to do, but now's not a good time. Yeah, we we talked about a few seasons ago um, date night ideas mm -hmm. because we we were big advocates on regular date nights, but with money being tight, date regular date nights in the way we may usually do it, going to dinner or doing something like that, may not be appropriate. We actually took a break for a good chunk of months. Uh, I f feel like we for a while for like a year. <laughs> it wasn't a year. <laughs> no, but it felt it was like for it. a while. Um, yeah, taking breaks from. Maybe dates that cost money. Um, swapping just, babysitters with friends. Yeah, you know, swapping babies. That that's another thing. Babysitters cost money, mm -hmm. and and so swapping with friends. But just getting creative with our lifestyle um, is a is a big deal to to address the issue of not having enough money yeah. in a certain season. Yeah. So uh, a verse that we can remember, um, and this is uh, it's a verse in First Timothy where. Timothy or Paul's talking to Timothy about how he addresses certain people in the church, but there's a principle here that we can, we can glean from it's uh, in first Timothy six seventeen. it says, as for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. And uh, so this is, he's t talking to Timothy about like, Hey, there's, there's wealthy people in the church, encourage them with this. But I want to put this out there that if we live in America, now I know that everyone's on varying levels of 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 wealth or income, but we're in a we're very fortunate to live in a country that has free commerce and we can we can start businesses and we can invest and we're still currently fairly free people and we have we're wealthy in many other ways than just money. And I want to remind us of that, and especially as believers, guys, we are we are rich in Christ. We are rich in God and we need to remember that. And um, we're not to put our hope in the uncertainty of riches, of money, of gaining more and more and more. It is not our strong tower. In the Proverbs, it says that 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 a, a fool sees his riches as his strong tower. They're not that, that having little or a lot of money is not what keeps us. Mm -hmm. It's Christ that keeps us, um, and that's what his encouragement here is: is that let's put our hope on God, who richly provides us with everything mm -hmm. to enjoy. So when we say things like put our hope in God or put our trust in God, that's not like something that we just wake up every day and, and say, okay, my hope's in God, and then carry on with the uh, things we like to do for entertainment or go have yeah, fun. Yeah, just keep going and not changing like, at all. <laughs> so like there is that that tension of saying my hope and trust is in the Lord, but I still have all these responsibilities and job yeah. and uh, you know, got to work hard to do and provide. Well, I put that in the category of, um, testing God. We're told not, we're told never to test the Lord, not to put him to the test. So it's like, I trust God. Therefore I'm just going to rack up my credit card and not worry about it. And he'll figure it out. No, it's, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to walk in wisdom mm. because I, my hopes in God, these things that I crave and desire, I'm going to say no to because I can't afford them and I don't need them because my hopes in God, mm. I can make these changes that feel really hard mm -hmm. and painful and scary, but my hope is and trust is in God. I think that's more what it's talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just clarifying. <laughs> uh, so we are on Mark 419. Did yeah, there's, a, there's another verse um, in the parables of the seed and the soil, um, the sower and the seed uh, in Mark 419, verses 18 and 19, actually, it says, and others are the ones sown among the thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. This is another danger uh, um, and a principle on when it comes to money and the cares of the world is that when we focus on that only, we're being deceived because riches are deceitful. They come and they go, the Proverbs say, mm -hmm. it, the, as fast as it's here is as fast as it's gone. So if we're looking forward to that next, like, oh, all we need is this, then we've forgotten that we're to rely on every word that comes out of the mouth of God mm -hmm. for our sustenance, for our security, for our, our for everything we need. And so that word that's trying to, to work in us, God's word that's trying to work in us, it can be choked out by us just having our eyes on our cares, on our worries, on 
seeking after money and the desires of all the things that we crave in this life. Um, and it chokes it, it chokes it out. And then that, that word can't produce fruit in our lives. Mm. Uh, so with, if all we're focusing on is the inflation, oh my goodness, the gas prices, oh my goodness. If those are the only thing that we're worried about or caring about, then we're going to forget what God might be trying to do inside of us Mm -hmm. right now through this season. All right. So um, this next question is for our listeners. (laughs) How do we keep marriage thriving under financial burden or strain? So when there is that weight of um, expectation and responsibility and just, (laughs) oh, tightness of things. Yeah. How how does a marriage keep going? What do we do? Uh, I think on a very simple level, we, ask each other questions. Yeah. So we meet each other face to face. We, we talk, we, we kind of already touched on that earlier, Mm -hmm. but like we ask even just, how are you doing? And giving each other the room to comfort each other, to encourage one another. Uh, we, we ask, what can we do about it? Mm -hmm. What can we do about this thing that we're under the weight of? Yeah. The, what can we do about it? I know the men, we like to jump on like, Hey, let's do the solutions. But as a man, Based on jumping off of your last question to me about how do I deal with trying to not overdo it, pursuing finances yeah. and then trusting God and pursuing him. And yeah. um, I really appreciate it when you ask me how I'm doing with these things. Mm. When you recognize that that is a heavy weight. Mm. Um, and I know that there are probably someone listening that the, the wives also bring in money and that that's very common these days. Um, and to be honest, me and you, we work together. So the money comes from both of us, but mm-hmm. The burden of managing it is on my shoulders. Yeah. And when you recognize that, when you know that I'm, I'm constantly thinking about that and like trying to figure out what we're going to be doing and how mm-hmm. we're going to take care of it and manage all these things, I do appreciate that. Cool. So I, I think that's a good that. question to that's ask good. Yeah, your spouse, whoever you know might have that burden on their shoulders. Um, cool. Yeah. I think a follow-up to that is what else can I do that would help alleviate stress in another area because I might not be able to take this huge weight off your shoulders right now. Right. But is there another area of your life? Like, can I go clean and organize your garage for you? Or can I? You could absolutely go <laughs> you know clean I mean? and organize my I'm garage. I'm just saying like, let's put eyes and hearts on what, what can we do to minimize some of the other stress points in life? Because when it's hard enough to handle one thing, all the other things comp- do the compound effect. And mm-hmm. that's hard. I, I think, and I don't know if this goes for everyone, but for our situation, for our relationship, I know that there are things that you, that are on your mind. We were just talking about it tonight about all the, all the things in our life that we need done. Yeah. Um, and not that you can't bring them up and can, and remind me and say, Hey, we have things to do. We got a list. Let's, you know, figure out a way to chip at it. Like we talked about in the last episode pace mm-hmm. about slowly, you know, chipping away at stuff. Um, recognizing that there might be a heavier load than I need to bear. Um, and not like heaping stuff on top of it. Uh. And I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to, <laughs> I'm not trying to beat around the bush. I'm just saying, I think other husbands might feel that way mm. of like there, because there's all these other things. Sometimes we, we, the way we might respond is I'm, I'm anxious and I'm overwhelmed. So I'm going to dump all this stuff I'm overwhelmed with on my spouse because I want them to help me figure it out or I need help. And then forgetting that they also have a bunch of things that they're stressed Mm -hmm. and overwhelmed about that they may not be saying anything or so just being aware of that and I think that's communicating well. I think it's good for me to hear that. Evaluating what's necessary yeah, and saying, hey, how can I make the load? Like you said, how can I make the load less? Yeah, that's really good. Cool. Well, uh, I think another important aspect to all of this is just understanding that we both make make mistakes, especially when it comes to money. Mm-hmm. And when both people, you, you know, mean like the paintball gun I had, I bought once. Cause I just, okay, that really was a wanted... long time ago. <laughs> I'm not holding that against you, but yes, he did do that once when we had no money. Not that buying um, a paintball gun's bad, <laughs> but we shouldn't, I shouldn't timing. have bought it then. <laughs> it's bad timing. Um, we, do, we, when we have access to funds, like there's times that we make mistakes or we make a purchase that maybe we shouldn't have. And I just want to encourage us to be people of humility Mm -hmm. and recognizing that none of us are perfect and it's something that we can all walk through with grace yeah and say okay well we shouldn't have done that but let's move on what do you always say do the next right thing yeah let's do the next right thing (laughs) how do we reconcile this yeah that's that's a good point um and we 
we've been talking about this a lot is, and again, instead of kicking ourselves for past mistakes, let's practice learning from them and say, okay, we did make that mistake. We're going to admit it, but we're going to let it teach us. Yeah. Because that's so much better than just self-loathing or self-defeat. Yeah. Learning from our mistakes is what I believe God would want for us is to grow. Yeah. (laughs) I'd say there's uh, one more powerful aspect to marriage that I want to bring up that can really help carry you guys through a a stressful time with finances. And that's um, understanding the power of your unity in marriage. Because when you start to blame each other or pinpoint, oh, this debt is your fault or this problem is your fault or this decision is your fault. It just starts to crumble from there. So, and I know that from experience because I did this to Aaron back in the early days of our marriage. And I, I blamed him for a lot of the, the burden, the financial burden that was on us. But when, what I realized is when we can team up and work together, no matter who's at fault, Mm because that part doesn't matter. The the part that matters now is that you're one and that you're working together to get out from under it. That's what works. That's there's yeah. power in that. Well, and isn't that the Ecclesi- the verse in Ecclesiastes? Yes, yes. Two, Go read chapter four. Two are more profitable. Yep. So, um, I want to. We we we. Jennifer brought up that we're going to talk about cryptocurrency. Sorry, we ran out of time. Yeah, no, we're going to talk <laughs> about it real quick. Um, and here's what here's why I'm bringing up. So, cryptocurrency or stocks or investing, real estate. I just want to mention. I know not everyone's in the in a place that they might be in to be able to invest. You maybe you don't have a lot of extra cash, liquid cash. I just want to know, I just want you all to know that to have a mindset of investing long-term to how, whatever that looks like is a very good thing. I think you're not saying it has to be crypto. You're just saying in general, long-term investing, this is why I say this can be done. Yeah. There are things that we have invested in over the years, a little bit here or a lot, you know, whenever we could that I'm looking at now that are very helpful yeah. in this season where things are tattered. Not that I want to just go liquidate things, but I could if I needed to. Yeah. And I, so I'm just putting that wisdom out there that having that mindset of putting a little bit somewhere, um, not just in a savings account that's yielding you points. It's kind of like that. It's like that legacy living. Yeah. It's thinking longer term than just tomorrow. Yeah. Um, which is not, again, I did not get taught this necessarily growing up. I didn't get taught this in school. Um, and so I'm, that's why we're bringing that up. Cryptocurrency. Okay, but, but cryptocurrency, okay. cause you were saying that in general, but cryptocurrency, some people, this is their first or second time hearing this word. And they're like, what are you talking about? What does this have to do with marriage? Well, they're going to hear about it more <laughs> and more over the years. Okay. They just are. It's going to, it's going to become more and more mainstream. I learned about cri- cryptocurrency, um, for the first time back in 2015, 2016, I was, um, You'd come home all excited. I was like, consulting with I don't know some, what you're talking about. some dudes. They were really cool guys and they had a, a Bitcoin mining machine. Okay. I, <laughs> I still don't actually know what they do, but I, I heard about it back in 2015. If I would have invested that's back in 2015, uh, okay. but that's should've again, should have, would have, could have. <laughs> but I, I learned about it then, but it wasn't until uh, 2020 that I really. Yeah. Cause there was this huge crash in the markets yeah. and then you started. I, kind of, I'll get there in a second. I'll get there is, in a second. Hold on. I got to explain. Aaron's got this very research nature about him. And when he gets excited about something, he dives all in and he can't stop or shut off his brain until he understands that thing. And so, okay. Uh, only a few things. Okay. <laughs> okay. Things you really care about. So real quick, cryptocurrency, it's a digital currency in which transactions are verified and records maintained by a decentralized system using cryptography. Again, stuff that I don't really know about, um, rather than being a centralized authority. So our currency that we have, the, the U.S. dollar, is, is managed by the, the United States, a centralized authority. Cryptocurrency is managed by lots of people, all lots of computers world. all over the world. So there's, it's decentralized. And that's essentially the idea of what cryptocurrency is. And cryptocurrency is built on this idea of a thing called blockchain. Blockchain is a system in which a record of transactions made in Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency are maintained across several computers that are linked in peer-to-peer network. Simplify it. <laughs> Essentially, again, I'm I'm learning all this th- this stuff as I go. Um, it's a ledger. It's like this. If you think about a like a spreadsheet, yeah. just with line items, columns, and but it's it lasts forever. Okay. And so imagine it's a record. It's a record. So imagine this. I give you one dollar bill. This it's a freshly printed dollar bill. Now imagine if you can keep a 
precise record of every hand that dollar bill passes through. So you give that dollar to me and for it, something. And it and remembers then, me and it remembers you. And then I pass it off to someone else. And but it, it also going. keeps track of what it was bought, it was spent on, when it was spent on, where it was spent on. And so, and, and forever. Hold on. Doesn't that scare you a little bit? It's terrifying, okay. but this is the future of money. <laughs> <laughs> this is where money is going. That. Almost every government in the in the world is planning on doing some form of digital currency. Hmm. The United States is already working on a digital dollar, um, and there's already ten thousand or so cryptocurrencies in the world being wow. traded currently. So the reason we're sharing all this with you is because it's something that I've been passionate about for the last few years. Again, I'm not telling you what to do. Don't take. Don't say Aaron told me to go buy cryptocurrency, hmm. but I do think you should be considering investing a little bit if you can somewhere. That's something you should think about. And pray I'll about. say this as a wife, like we've had some really interesting conversations about cryptocurrency. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. But it's been something that we've been having fun learning about together. Yeah. Um, but something, I, uh, uh, some processes I want to put in your plate when it comes to this idea of investing. Before we decide to put money anywhere, let on crypto, what have we done? We talk about it for to- a long time. Together. We talk about it. Yeah. We go through all the pros, cons, yep. this, that. I don't understand. What? Do you, wait a minute. <laughs> and then we agreed about it. We agreed mm-hmm. on something. Mm-hmm. We said, we're going to do X. Yeah. We're going to invest this. Thirdly, we made sure to use expendable funds. So this was stuff that if all went haywire and we lost, it wouldn't put us in a position that put our family at risk of you right. know, financial I didn't take ruin. all of our paychecks and no. dump it into this. I'm like, Oh, we don't, can't buy food. So that those are some principles to consider when thinking about investing in anything is, are you talking about it? Have you made a plan? Do you have available funds that you're willing? This is the key word are willing to lose. Yeah. And do research like just, yeah, you got to You can't just rely on someone else's word. But like really dig in and see what everybody's word is on it. <laughs> it's a, this is a famous term. Do what you I, can. All the articles I read on, on trading, it always says, do your own research. Yeah. Because they don't, no one wants to be liable yeah. for your trade and you lose money. I don't, I don't want to be liable for that either. So do your own research. Um, just some things to know about cryptocurrency specifically. More stats. It's extremely <laughs> volatile. Oh. So it's like, it's not like the stock market where you're dropping like 10%, 5%, and then you're going up 10%, 5%, 2%. This is like... You can go up 10,000% or you can drop 100%. And it's like that. It's crazy. It's like the Wild West. So just know that. Do your research. Um, also, if you are going to get into cryptocurrency, get in um, to it for the technology rather than the means to get rich. So understand whatever that currency you're looking at, what its purpose is. What does it, what does it because do? Because these, what Aaron's saying, these blockchains that they're built upon. They're technology. They're technology and they're actually used for... Well, some of them, not some all of, some of them, are not all of them okay. but they're, some of them are very useful, very smart. Here's some quick stats for you, just because you're probably thinking like, okay, what's this deal with cryptocurrency? More so they're like, how long is this episode? 2000, <laughs> in 2016, there were 5 million people worldwide who own crypto. Um, this year, there's now more than 320 million That's people crazy. worldwide who own cryptocurrency. That's a 6,300% increase wow. from 2016 to today. Thirteen uh, percent of the U.S. owns crypto. That's a pretty big chunk. Mm-hmm. It's over ten percent. I was thinking that there's still a lot of people that aren't in it. <laughs> that well, there there is. There's still you know eighty seven percent. So the, here's some stats on the owners of cryptocurrency: sixty three percent are male, thirty seven percent female, seventy two percent aged under thirty four. Mm-hmm. So again, we should always take note of like what are the the young generation. Mm-hmm. Um, what are they investing in? Engaging what are they in? interested in? What are they interested in? Okay. 71% have a bachelor's degree or higher. Okay. How crazy is that? Yeah. Um, I didn't know that. Uh, the average crypto owner, owner earns about 25000 per year. Also crazy. So these are just some average stats across the whole board. Again, not everyone earns money. But um, so we just wanted to bring that up because that's something that we've been interested in. It has been on some levels a blessing to us. And it's been fun to learn. And it's a pretty awesome thing to be learning about. But more than that, you, you really believe that the future has crypto in its like. Yes, I do. Within reach. It's Especially like if you read the Bible. Okay. <laughs> I, I look at it and say, okay, this, this plays into all the things that I, I, I consider when it comes to 
We're, is that another events. episode we need to flesh out? I feel like we did a, <laughs> we did an episode last season, I oh. think, on uh, end time okay. stuff. So again, um, we know that not everyone has a lot of money to invest, but there are ways to invest. Um, maybe not in crypto, maybe not in real estate, but you know, you could put a hundred dollars here or ten dollars there into something that's going to grow. Maybe that's a friend's business. Maybe you have a friend that wants to start a candle business or a soap making business or who knows, a, a crocheting business. Maybe you say, hey, can I help you a little bit and, you know, work out something with them. Um, another good way to invest is in yourself. This is a note that I you put down that I thought was really good about um, getting out of debt. Living a debt free lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Live, living That's a, a huge investment. It is. Because imagine if you, so you have this, let's say you have a $100 payment on a credit card. You get rid of that credit card. Now you have a hundred more dollars in your bank account. That's a pretty good investment in my opinion. So yeah. investing in your family and yourself in that way is a, is a pretty awesome thing to chip away at debt. All right. Well, I think we've spent a long in-depth mm-hmm. time on this, <laughs> um, on this topic and I'm really grateful for it. Um, we've had a lot of good conversation in our own marriage about finances and it's helped me grow to understand more about um the world of money and so we just want to be an encouragement to you guys listening to go home and talk about it with your spouse uh, maybe if you need to re-listen to this episode with them alongside them uh, it would be a really great uh way to like we said in the beginning ignite that fire of conversation and just mm-hmm. um see where each other's at See where each other are at and evaluate your finances. Be willing to talk about the hard things. Ask each other, how are you doing? Or how can I help alleviate this stress that you've been experiencing? Mm-hmm. Even if it's in another area of marriage, because all these things matter. And uh, and then be asking yourself, which is why we brought up cryptocurrency is, as a family, how can we be thinking for the future? Mm-hmm. How can we be preparing so that our kids yeah. may be better off than we are um, and leaving that legacy of of mm-hmm. understanding of finances mm-hmm. and how to use it well when we are when we understand finances and we use wisdom we become a light in this world and people take notice and they they want to know how are you doing that thing or why are you doing it like that and our answer is god and and therefore we become a light in this world and we become good stewards of what he's entrusted to us mm-hmm. so all and- good things Last note. We can't keep going. You have to. That's why we care about money. (laughs) Not because we love money, but because we know how God can use it. Yep. And that, like we say in our book, it's a tool to be used for God's glory. Amen. So. Very good. Challenge. Okay. Moving on. Weekly challenge. First of all, I just want to let everyone know because it's a cliffhanger. (laughs) (laughs) We did the challenge from the last two weeks. And so we didn't get to go do... Uh, pickleball because we got hit with some major fires here and in central Oregon smoke. and it's just really bad outside. I've yeah. even had a headache from it, but we did do a game. We played boggle. boggle. I've never boggle. played it before. Yeah. And we'll never say who won. Um, moving right along. Aaron won. Uh, we played a couple of rounds. It of took that. us a couple of rounds to figure out how to play it. <laughs> We're like, it's this a, game doesn't make actually, any sense. <laughs> it's a good two player game. It was fun. It was. And then we worked out together. We did some lifting. Little 20 minute, little quick little workout. Some rowing. It was great. So we did it. So this week's challenge is dream together about something you both love and enjoy or about future business ideas or whatever it is that you guys just, what's a, what's a dream you have together that you guys can be discussing and figuring out? Yeah. A simple uh, question to, a- to answer is what is something that excites you about next year? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The prospect of cheaper gas, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> So this can be setting a goal or dreaming. It doesn't really mean it has to happen. It's just being creative with one another. Um, Aaron and I like to do this from time to time. We t- we dream about our retirement plan, <laughs> which... Which is not really a retirement plan. We don't know if it'll ever <laughs> happen, but it does involve donuts. <laughs> it does, actually. Um, <laughs> you just give our secret away. I know, because why not? <sighs> Yes, our retirement plan does involve donuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, also, if you have the Marriage After God book or you're planning on getting it, you can read through or skim chapter 13 together if you want, because it's all about dreaming together. All about dreaming together. We're going to end with a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for all of the ways you've provided for us. Thank you for our finances, our jobs, and helping us provide for our families. 
Thank you for the times other people have helped us, encouraged us, advised us, and supported us through hard times. We pray we would be people who would be eager and ready to be used by you to help others who are in need. We pray you would give us wisdom in handling and managing our finances. Please teach us the best ways to save and spend what we have. We pray we would learn to invest in ways that work out for our family. We pray we would be able to build up all that we have to bless generations of families that come after us. When the world experiences crisis and it interrupts our finances, when inflation causes tension, when hard times create a burden of stress, we pray we would remain humble and steadfast. We pray we would trust in you. Please help us to encourage one another in the areas of finance. We pray we would trust each other in marriage with money and protect our hearts from greed. Lord, we pray for wisdom and continual growth. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Marriage After God podcast. If you found today's episode fun and encouraging, please take a moment to share it on social media or in an email to some of your married friends. Also, would you please take a moment and leave us a review? Reviews help to spread the word about our podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode, and you can always check out more of our resources at marriageuppergod.com. You can follow us on social media for more marriage encouragement on Facebook and Instagram at Marriage After God, at Husband Revolution, and at Unveiled Wife. We hope you have an incredible week and look forward to sharing more with you next week on the Marriage After God podcast. Mm-hmm.